so good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone uh, so myself nilima satyam as a tc 22 member i welcome you all for this uh, second lecture of this monthly lecture series organized uh, along with the tc 220 of ismg and it's my pleasure to have our second speaker today dr wang who kindly agreed to give a talk so before uh, uh, proceeding so we have dr george so uh, he is a vice chairman of tc 220 so um, uh, and also we have dr anil joseph uh, who is the president of igs yeah. here so i'll start like i request dr anil to say few words and then uh, dr george will introduce the speaker yeah hello all it's a great pleasure that this field monitoring in geomechanics has come out with this series of lecture every month and it's a very informative session and look forward for seeing you and it's very very important talk today professor wang will be talking to us to a very vital aspect the prediction of landslides which is a very important aspect which can save large number of lives so that's very essential in areas like india which has got a, a lot of problems connected with landslides leading to numerous deaths which is happening every year so it will be informative and i request all the young participants not only to listen to that try to apply the knowledge into practice and make sure that we are improving the society's capacity of the, uh, resisting the landslide in a better way so that only a few lives are lost in the process and i wish all the very best for the event and i would like to congratulate neelima for coordinating the event and all the uh, seniors who is attending here samajya sir uh, george pizata ap singh tawata sir and all who has assembled here to listen to the wish all the very best for the program and hope we, 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 this lecture series will continue neelima has done a lot of planning and being part of the field monitoring in geomechanics along with uh, neelima in the tc220 it gives me a great pleasure and we are looking for for the, for the major event which is to happen in 2026 when we will be hosting it at iit indore so thank you so much dr anil so dr george so i kindly request you to introduce about our tc220 activities and also our today speaker thank you very much neelima i try to share my screen uh then can you see my screen yes yes well on behalf of the tc220 chairman dr andy ridley uh, i would like to welcome you all to this uh, event which has been organized by nilima and i thank very much nilima for the great effort she is doing in, in order to support uh, tc220 activities I would like just to give you a very brief introduction to TC twenty two hundred twenty activities. As per uh, this date, uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, TC two twenty is a quite uh, young uh, technical committee. Was established few years ago, but uh, we have done, I think, uh, a great. Uh, number of uh, activities which have been uh, uh, a very important steps uh, which have been very important steps in order to enhance the culture of monitoring all over the world the most important event uh, which has been organized by the committee was the 11th edition of FMGN which was uh, held in London in September uh 2022 it was a great success and was uh, the first uh, event uh, the first uh, symposium organized under uh, the uh, control let's say of tc220 uh, the next one will be in india nilima and uh, her colleagues are organizing it i'm sure it will be a great success and i'm sure that the nilima will uh, say something about uh, this event uh, <clears throat> later on for the next year tc220 uh, will be involved uh, in two main activities the first one will be a, a mini what has been called a mini symposium on field monitoring in geomechanics uh, during sorry sorry during the 7th international conference on geotechnical and geophysical site characterization characterizations which will be held in spain in barcelona in june 2024 and then in uh, august uh, 
during the 18th European Conference on Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineer in Lisbon, Portugal, uh, we will have a, a special section uh, dedicated to uh, field monitoring in geomechanics. Uh, we are now organizing this uh, event uh, and we are trying to put together different speakers, different uh, events. Uh, uh, and as soon as uh, we will have defined the, the program, it will be uh, sent to everybody in the TC uh, in order to let people uh, understand what we are doing and uh, trying to attend uh, these events. Regarding uh, the possibility to get information regarding our activity, uh, you can refer to our website. Oops, sorry, uh, our website. Uh, here you can uh, see the link uh, the, in the website, which is under uh, progress because uh, again, being the TC quite new, even the website uh, is under development, but you can find a number of information which can be very useful uh, to everybody. And we are also trying to develop some uh, social activity or activity on uh, social media. Uh, an example is uh, what uh, our uh, colleague, uh, Andre Silva from Brazil is doing. He has opened a web, a web YouTube channel and he is presenting a number of speeches or presentation regarding uh, field monitoring or monitoring in, in general. Sorry, uh, sorry, I don't know, there's a, okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, and this is a, a very interesting uh, idea from uh, Andre in order to spread again the culture of monitoring. It has also been open uh, a LinkedIn page. You can see here the, the page, so you can uh, join it if you want. We'll be very happy to have you as a member of this community. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are 169. At the moment, we were 80 few days ago. Now we are 169, and probably will be more <laughs> in the next days. So it is again in progress but it's something that can be very useful. So this in brief uh, is uh, the activity that the TC220 is uh, doing. And uh, this lecture that Milima uh, has been organizing is a very interesting part of our activity. And I hope uh, it will continue in the future with a large number of uh, similar events. Having said this, uh, we can go directly to today's lecture. Today, sorry, but uh, there is someone who is trying to call me <laughs> and I cannot close it. Uh, today, we have the pleasure of having with us uh, Dr. Lin Wang. Dr. Lin Wang is a senior manager of geotechnical engineering with at the Chuo Kayatsu Corporation. Forgive me for uh, probably the bad pronunciation. And uh, he has a very large experience uh, in rain-induced slope stability, earthquake-induced slope stability, development of uh, slope monitoring and alarm systems. Today, Dr. Wang will present us a lecture whose title is Case Studies of Early Warning Monitoring of unstable slope using tilting and micro seismic sensor. Something very interesting. I'm really interested in listening what Dr. Wong will present us, mainly because I'm very interested in what is called early warning. And if you allow me, Dr. Wong, I anticipate a question I will pose you later. And the question is a very simple, but uh, at the same time, very complicated one. It is, uh, what is a real early warning monitor? What does it mean early? Because in the past, I, I have been discussing many times this point with colleagues. And I'm sure you will provide us a lot of information regarding this uh, and something that uh, we can use in our 
activities. So that's uh, all from my side. I leave uh, the floor to Dr. Wong. So please, uh, Lin, you can share your presentation and you can start uh, your lecture. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for introducing. So I want to share my PPT now. Is okay. Let me try to close and... my sharing. Why is not okay? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. You can see this PPT now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a senior manager. I uh, come from Chuokats Corporation, Japan. Uh, as you know, in Japan, many, many disasters happen, such as uh, landslide, uh, slope failure, and uh, uh, earthquake every year. So uh, for last 20 years, I was engaged for the monitoring. And after that, uh, so the early warning become very important things. I Sorry, think. Lin. Sorry, yeah. Lin. Can you can you switch to presentation mode? Your PPT. Okay. Come. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Come out to hear me. We hear you, but please go to presentation mode of your PPT. Okay, I see. Is okay. Okay, now it's okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. So here I will introduce some uh, case study, uh, studies uh, about the early warning monitoring of unstable snow using tier team and the macro size seism sensors. So I'll be uh, introduced two parts or two sections. First, I'll use, introduce the uh, rainfall induced Landslide or snow failure. After that, the cold seismic landslide will be after we we'll use the uh, second parts. Here, uh, this research will uh, get the sponsor uh, from the Cabinet Office of Japan. Uh, is that uh, SIP? SIP means Cross Ministry Strategy Innovation Promotion Program come from Japan. Yeah. Uh, the first, I will introduce the successful early warning uh, case of the dam site uh, slope failures. Uh, it, a, this is carried out by our company 30 years ago. And uh, our 30 mini, uh, mi uh, meter high and the 20 hundred meter length cut slope improvement construction works. On the national route to uh, national route in 1990, but but as you know, uh, after construction, um, we find some rock mass on our top out, and I find this snow is not so good. It's not maybe it's uh, unstable. So after that, our company set up two camera and after that I use the tensometer to get the monitoring and uh, find the danger or, or not. I just uh, show the video to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, a rock mass of 30,000 cubic meter and uh, graphs after installation, after 40 days. So the time our collapse that has, uh, has been focused according to by site of masons. Or so, the focus the time our rock stadium, the two video on the, uh, I'm sorry, I will use the, the two video will be uh, set up in the right side and the left side. And, uh, Catch the detail. This is the view from the left side, the upper side, from the left side. So, this is very successful early warning monitoring. If we cannot do this monitoring, 
Yeah, this is very a, a dangerous situation. And uh, how I can do the early morning? Of course, I just introduced the by site method. I will introduce the site method that will be coming from the uh, creep uh, rupture life prediction. It's come from uh, so, uh, of, 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 from Monkman and the Great No. So in here, well, if if the uh, failure happens, you will be uh, past the three stage. The first, you can see, it, this is the first uh, uh, primary stage. It is uh, already showing here, and the second stage is uh, keep the query rate at the uh, at the constant after right quick increase uh, in here. So. So the relationship should be described as the this function. This function. If we know we do the monitoring about the creep rate just like this, and you can get get the creep rupture lifetime. This is our uh, volume time. Yeah, just like like this, and. Uh, Saito model is come from this. The uh, Saito, uh, Professor Saito, an graduate from University of Tokyo in 1956, uh, after right, he works in Japanese World, uh, 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 Japanese Railway Institute. And after that, he carried out the field test over 80 things and uh, fixed the two math parameter, yeah, the M and the C. And uh, it will rewrite the function just like this. Saito say they all of the 18% will be in this row. It means if the way monitoring about the creep rate, you can find the creep rupture lifetime. It's very, very important. This is a best extensometer, yeah. So almost the same function, just like this. <clears throat> so after right, um, we are uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years ago, we in, uh, developed the new type of sensor, tier sensors. And the tier sensors, this is the image. And uh, where we, we use the steel rod, insert the ground, uh, so for shallow and uh, slope failure is very effective. Uh, so, <clears throat> so another so we use other sensors. Of course, it's very important. So water contents. So at the same time, so we carry out the monitoring. After that, <clears throat> and uh, another key uh, keyword is uh, multiple uh, multiple sensors. For use many, many sensors, if sensor is the cheapest, we can use the many, many sensor at the largest slope. Of course, sometimes our geo specialists tell us for the set up the sensor in here, but of usual well, one sensors cannot find the exact precision. If the setup in here, after that, the baby disorder happened in this area. So it's a big problem. If so, multiple sensor, and we check the and uh, room monitoring. If if uh, this area gave the failure, we can catch this phenomena. Yeah, after that, of course, after that, or gives another another case study will be uh, carried out in Brisbane, Australia. You can see this. Landers, is a typical landers, uh, landslide, and uh, a landslide, uh, landslide uh, uh, 
percent on uh, landslide uh, where we use uh, because every year this uh, slope moving never stop never stop so after that I we'll go to this phase, uh, this field and they set up the five sensor here just one two three four five in here yeah so after that we we'll give some imaging so for monitoring we can get the movement and give put some image in my my in my brain, but the early warning or where we find the and uh, find out the threshold is I think the control of the risk uh, control uh, the manage 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 the risk uh, become very important. The first are gives you an image only this sensor one two three four five. The red color means the tiered to the uh, 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 to the slope direction. Now, blue red means upper side, and uh, reverse uh, upper side the uh, uh, upper side the slope direction. Yo, know, after that, we we'll give some image just like this. Here is a two weeks interval interval. The after two weeks, after two weeks, after two weeks, for the monitoring, we can feel this slope is moving or not. I think it's very important. It's the best one sensors. Our can only check the curve and the value. So gives this. Image is become very important. So multiple multiple sensors has become very important. And after two weeks, and after two weeks, they so give the large information about this uh, 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 site. After that, we take the picture in the top of the slope. You can see many crack happen here. Yeah, many crack happen here, but we never sent out the early warning issue. Why? You never over our threshold value. Yeah. So, so work is also or maybe you will be asked some question. What is the time that we sent out the warning issue based on the tiered sensors array? So very important. Yeah. So uh, last uh, 20 years were carry, uh, were carry out many, many monitoring in the world, especially in Japan, Australia, in China, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Taiwan. So we brought the failure case in this graph. The axis is tilting rate, the tilting rate is on a tilting rate and the x, uh, y axis is the time until or failure or stability. And for example, if the, of course, monitoring can measure the deformation in tilting so will be tilt angle. For example, we, we use the threshold at the 0 0.1 degree per hour you can check the safety, safety where we get the one hours and our uh, escape time. But this is very large, very, 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 very large scale because uh, so if checked or use this point, we can get 10 hours. If we use this, we can, we can get an, uh, 15 hours. So. The detail, uh, the detail, and uh, the uh, detail information become really important. So we cater out the three types. The first is land night, and the second the slope failure, and the third is a collapse. Of course, if according to this, uh, for for land night. Uh, we can get much more time. It's for, fa uh, for, uh, for the slope failure, 
So we can get some time for x cap. So this is average. It's very similar to an uh, Markman ground node and the side model, uh, side method. So it's very important uh, uh, based uh, uh, based uh, based on the past research work and decide the threshold value. And uh, a lot of things are being introduced. The multiple uh, multiple uh, sensors uh, sensors monitoring for this area. If you set up many sensors in here, so the whole of the area you use the A0. The one sensor is just like this. The controls a smaller area, so they use the AN. This is average, of course. If one sensor is very dangerous because maybe uh, give out the four alarm. For for alarm, for alarm means maybe attacks by animal and uh, device debug, the device bug and that makes the mistake, uh, makes the makes the mistake. So for multiple sensors, we we'll increase the accuracy of the system. For example, you can see every sensor is where this is happening here. Is very safety. After rainfall, one sensors and then I, I check uh, 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 over uh, over the uh, yellow level. The uh, 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 gives some alarm, but the whole slope is safety. Of course, in large and in large. In this time, what dispatch is for the engineer check the situation. So we'll give our much more time to prepare, prepare and uh, check the detail and uh, avoid the four alarm. Yeah. Yeah, the whole soap become the unstable. At that time, we're sent out the worry issue to the governor and the government. Yeah. So conclusion, the single sensor some uh, uh, maybe makes the four alarm because the warning visual can easily be affected by local movement, maybe by <clears throat> animal attack, etc., and uh, many many things. And multiple sensors, the approach uh, appropriate sensors interval interval. For the multiple point measurement, reduce the coverage of each sensors. Yeah, that's improving system accuracy. I think is very important. Yeah, this is tiered sensors case. Next, or I will introduce our uh, size, uh, our laser, our vibration sensors. In here, I will be introduced use the multi-point measurement of micro chamber and the seismic motion of soap using a small accelerometer. Uh, accelerometers. Yeah. Of course, our purpose is very simple. And the first, evaluation of geo ground stability. And the second, estimation of a ground, uh, geo ground velocity structure and the construction of ground model. And the third is the measuring of depth uh, contribution of a support layer of the ground. And uh, next will be stability monitoring of a slope and the rock form. And estima uh, estimation of slope failure location and the verification of effect before the after counter mirror such as ground improvement. Yeah. So uh, vibration sensor maybe uh, can be used in many, many uh, projects. Our uh, pair attention to the bridge health monitoring. And uh, second, uh, second is a dam save, saver structure monitoring and the geo disaster early warning and the mining dam safety management. And uh, 
our sensor, our, maybe you, you note the two sensors will be invented our sensor unit. This is micro tumor sensor. And this, this is MEMOS accelerometer. Two, three sensors will be embedded, uh, embedded our sensor unit. This is micro tumor sensor and the MEMOS vibration sensor and the accelerometer trigger sensors. Why? Will be save powers because in the field, no uh, low power saving. The, it becomes the very important. In general time, if the, if the a sensor unit or keep the sleep situation with server power. And this is a very sensible sensor and for max streamer. So why we should be develop the new sensors, as you know. Micro streamer sensors are very expensive, very expensive. So we reduce the budget, reduce the, uh, the, the cost. So uh, at the same location or same field, we can use much many more sensors uh, to the to uh, to uh, to our uh, monitoring. Just like this. So the accuracy uh, verification of the macro signal may use this more macro uh, macro seismic accelerometer sensors. Just like this. Then, as as you can see. This is this sensor. This sensor is, is a conventional sensor. It's very expensive, but it's a very good sensor and a very good sensor. So, uh, at the our be check the situation or accuracy, and uh, we do the field test at the midnight. Midnight avoid avoid the people's knife noise and the traffic noise, and th this figure. Is a, a result. It's, it's a Fourier spectral of an, of conventional micro tumor sensor, and you can see this is predominant pre predominant uh, frequency is our or about the zero point three uh, zero zero point three seconds. And the change the uh, frequency is over, almost about a three hertz. Is very very really good result because in Tokyo, the uh, micro tumor sensor will be used or get the uh, predominant sense, uh, predominant frequency are almost uh, about the three hertz, and uh, the new sensors work where she checks the new sensors almost get the same result, same result. Yeah, it's very good, very good, but. We uh, our cost only one tenth or one fifth, so it's very cheap compared to the conventional sensor. Yeah. Uh, another thing is uh, another uh, field where we introduce another uh, 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 field test. So where we use five set sensors at the small slope, the one, two, three, four, five, and at the five sensor. Layer pass five sensor were set up set up as the conventional uh, seismometer uh, and uh, check the situation. It's very fortunate. After we were set up, after uh, we uh, we meet the earthquake happened in Chiba prefecture. It's not so far from our, our, our field. You can see the red color is the conventional sensors. Acceleration, yeah, and uh, blue color is our sensors uh, curve is all matched, almost the same, and uh, from north south direction, east west direction, and the uh, up and down direction. It's a very good result. Of course, you cannot uh, further will be check the situation where you use the A fifty and uh, uh, spectra. Yeah, you can see from 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 second to the 10 seconds, they were almost matched, almost the same. Of course, acceleration is almost the same. And uh, this graph will be show the two sensors graph. This uh, red one is number one, is the top of the slope. 
And the number two, the bottom of the slope. You can see in this ranging, range, you can see it's become, uh, become very large because the slope is very losy. So the amplitude, uh, 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 amplitude uh, volume may become bigger. So where I check the uh, uh, slope situation, it's good result. Of course, th this graph they will show the uh, macro fever situation. Yeah, uh, it's very very good result. So, yeah, so we can use our new sensors at the see our uh, actual uh, slope failure and uh, some hair hair monitor monitoring uh, to the many many things. The next case study. I uh, will be introduced. We we'll use the new sensor in rock four and the rock prior, uh, rock or collapse risk uh, risk of vibrations are vain. And uh, in Japan, uh, for rock and the rock uh, rock four and the rock or collapse rock, and the risk of vibration survey in general, we we'll use two or more sensor in here. Yeah, the one sensor should be set up with the uh, bedrock, bedrock is is, is very uh, uh, no, no uh, is necessary. And another sensor will be set up to the rock mass is unstable. It just uh, in top of the rock mass. So we okay, we should be find the three parameter is very become very important. The first is a. Uh, uh, predominant, uh, pre, uh, predominant frequency uh, for uh, rock mass. If the frog talking is, if the volume is uh, uh, under the 30 hertz, it, it, it means becomes unstable. And uh, another very important parameter is uh, about the RMS velocity amplitude ratio. If over two, the uh, rock becomes unstable, just like this. If if the moving just like this situation, uh, the moving movement, um, the RMS with, uh, velocity amplitude ratio it become uh, one. Yes, uh, all over two is become a dangerous uh, dangerous situation. After all others, where we use the uh, uh, Attend, uh, attend you, attenuation constants. Uh, of course, our best our uh, result come from uh, acceleration or okay, calculate the just like this. Yeah. After that, we'll set and uh, we'll, uh, we'll jump this uh, PPD. And uh, for monitoring, this step so to will be carried out will be doing the first of course after setup the first the waveform will be out, uh, uh, output uh, in our system um of course by internet or transfer our data to tokyo and the another is a uh, frequency spectral analysis just like this and the third was the output the vibration situation the finally the calculation of the uh, cumulative uh, uh, amplitude and uh, after other uh, we set up uh, 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 uh set by the one side or uh, three set of the uh, uh, vibration sensor in Hiroshima prefecture in Japan here's Japan yes here's Hiroshima is a show bala is a field site your know, field site you can see from this picture uh it's very unstable slope very unstable slope so for only by photo maybe it becomes very dangerous very dangerous in this site we set but three set uh uh, since I'm here, so number one, two, three. Please remember this direction. Remember this direction. It's very weak crack. Yeah. It's fortunate. After our uh, setup 
uh, and uh, a large earthquake happened in Japan, in Hiroshima. It's a Kyushu, Kyushu. It's not uh, large earthquake happened in Japanese magnitude is MJ 6.4. The maximum seism uh, seismic intensity is over five. It's a very large earthquake. Here's Hiroshima. It's uh, uh, far up from the uh, uh, from the uh, earthquake epicenter is over 180 uh, 80 kilometers. Yeah. <clears throat> so our sensors catch the uh, catch the uh, earthquake. Uh, of course, uh, for uh, three sensors to catch the earthquake. And uh, I, I will show you the particular uh, orbit of displacement. Orbit displacement, you can see the almost the same direction. This means orbit can find out the weak crack in the um, uh, slope. Yeah. Uh, another uh, will be to the uh, analysis. You can find the, uh, the number one. The number one is bottom of the slope. The number three, the top of the slope. You can see the frequency is a spe um, uh, of course a uh, Fourier uh, spectrum uh, will be to uh, the plot just like this. This is this is. And uh, uh, lecture, uh, lecture uh, uh, frequency. Yeah, this point is very important. And uh, our predominant, our predominant frequency. Yeah, now is very important. And the lowest south direction and the east west direction. And uh, well, of course, uh, well, almost the same result. They say ratio about the. So number three and number one in north and the north uh, south and east west direction. This is the peak, the very. So, so we we plot the result at the same graph. You can find the predominant frequency is, is very small, but the arm and Velocity amplitude ratio is never, uh, never, uh, never over uh, to uh, to uh, two is almost the one. It means at this earthquake, this move, uh, the slope is moving by the top and the bottom is at the same ac uh, ac uh, acceleration, uh, uh, acceleration, and. But this is very weak. So the dominant preference is very, very small. So ORB gives the result just like this. And the RMS velocity amplitude ratio is less than two, which judged to be safe. But the dominant frequency is, is a dangerous range. So say so because the judgment threshold is, is uh, 30 hertz in the unstable region. So it will concede this is because the ground structure becomes uneven due to the uh, deterior uh, deterioration of the unstable rock mass resulting in unstable structure. The, finally, it is considered necessary to carry out a long-term monitoring but what gives the right to the government is in this time is safe. So we save the money for government. Uh, our government is very important about our monitoring results. And uh, another thing, or uh, another case study will be introduced is uh, will be used to the ex <laughs> expressway and the highway slope uh, stability. Stability uh, monitoring use uh, developed our seismometers, and uh, it's very at a large scale uh, monitoring or be current uh, our current current on now. Uh, for it, this is our challenge 
yeah, yes, our challenge. So if earthquake happen, this will be suppose the basis ground is just the, uh, the green color. So the sensor will be set, they set up the basis ground. If earthquake happen, will be use this sensor and uh, measure the earthquake. Of course, will be uh, reversed in this, for example, in, in here on uh, this point, this point, this point, this point will be used uh, many, many sensor in the ground, the low, low ground, low land, the soft layer. So, so we'll use this as uh, uh, the earthquake input and this earthquake sensor, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a uh, seismometer where we get the uh, output. So the relationship between the base ground and the surface ground is not becomes very important. And uh, so uh, ground vibration character uh, the characteristic, uh, um, of course, of for example, the am ampli uh, amplification dominant period are affected by the underground structure. So where we check the situation after that. And the multiple point measurement on the ground surface and the utilization of existing uh, ground survey results is our uh, purpose. And uh, uh, where we here, so much point measurement in mountain plateau and the no land the confirm the basement and the lowland side and the basement on the mountain side. So uh, very important. Of course, or give some ex uh, 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 case study. So now for huge area, how we can set up our sensor? Where? How I can find the suitable site? Where is the dangerous? Yeah. Is very important. The first, so the topography, uh, topography and uh, geological characteristic, uh, characteristic of the study area should be evaluated first. In Japan, uh, it's very easy to find out, find out the geological map and we can buy it. And uh, slope class, uh, classification map will be, well, we can get uh, from a governor, a government. Is become very easy things, and uh, for next, will be show uh, find out the where is the suitable site will be set up. Of course, we will use the a uh, uh, drone and uh, and uh, uh, from of uh, and uh, okay, get some uh, get some and. Uh, 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 the micro to, uh, micro micro topography and uh, uh, find out the dangerous next map is 100 years ago the Kanto uh, large earthquake happened many many things uh by many people uh, died in, in here this is 100 years ago situation. So this is now, uh, now uh, situation. So we can find some unstable uh, slope failure happened here. I can get found out, and uh, at the same times we we choice uh, uh, unstable uh, slope. Set up our tiered sensor and uh, seismometer in, uh, in here, and uh, S one is. Uh, uh, a seismometer and uh, K1, K2 is tiered sensor. This is very dangerous because it's, it's too uh, sharp. It's all, it's all about the 30 degree. It's very dangerous uh, slope. After that, so after setup, we check the situation. This is tiered sensor movement. After rainfall, after rainfall, we find the tear sensor moving, but there's a slowly. So where we check the situation at the same time, and 
I is fortunate. Um, uh, one year, so I catch the over uh, eight earthquake in this slope. I will show the one uh, one result to you. This is not uh, or uh, is it, this is earthquake happened uh, after we set up and uh, our sensor. I will catch the on uh, the on uh, the earthquake data and. Uh, for frequency, uh, when we use the uh, spectra, uh, uh, Fourier spectra or approach the frequency to amplify uh, uh, amplification, uh, calculate by transfer function. Yeah, the red color is north east direction, and uh, our blue color is east west direction, and on the down direction, just where it can. Uh, find the peak about this result. They are well pay attention to the uh, lost east and uh, under down. It, 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 this is east west directions peak. And uh, we carry out the, uh, the calculation by supercomputer. Yes, it's very, very, very on a, a large computer. So of course, our first will be input the eleva uh, elevation distribution to the uh, uh, other parameter. And uh, of course, the parameter decides our right just, uh, just in here will be uh, jump it. And of course, uh, just uh, before I will introduce uh, some uh, 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 Sawyer pro uh, uh, property, and the uh, rock property or be, uh, as an input parameter. And uh, this is a large calculation. So the uh, FEM element, uh, 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 FEM will be over 10 million years uh, uh, sediment. So uh, this is result or be put just the next this. You can see our, uh, our monitoring site in, in here. But for the calculation, we can find the red color. Red color means it's unstable. Uh, unstable uh, uh, re re reason, re uh, no, 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 unstable location. Unstable location. So it becomes very, very easy to find out where we can do the monitoring. Yeah. So, the CD seismic response analysis by uh, FEM calculation. So for the our monitoring sites, and uh, we can you can you can see almost about the three hertz we can get so almost the same result, just like this. This peak and the uh, trough uh, maybe is uh, is not so good because some. Uh, we need some more you know, ex accurate uh, information or because the input parameter to the computer. So the further um, investigation is, is necessary. The finally, I will be on a, introduce the uh, another case study. The vibration and uh, se <laughs> seismicity motion monitoring of the adjunct ro uh, railroad structure behavior. As recent work carried out gets the result. As you you can see, the large uh, slender, uh, slide happened uh, two years ago. It's two years ago, and uh, because the landslide, the deformation, of deformation is the tonal tonal uh, shape changes cannot use again just like this, and uh, nearby is the railways in here. Of course, retain war becomes very important. So the if the retain war is uh, becomes unstable, is a very large program. This location is a Toyama City. It's a very important on a, on a railway rail, railway road. So, so the collapse that should be not happening most. So it's 
becomes unstable and uh, uh, it's a big problem. And uh, after that, we carry out the investigation. This crack happened here is very clearly. And uh, nearby is the railway and uh, so passed from here. Uh, so, so we set up two sensors, the top and the bottom. And the two sensors, after real, uh, after train passed, we can, we can get the vibration. And they use the vibration where, uh, uh, and, uh, do, uh, do they, my judgment. They, after ring passed, of course, acceleration, where we, uh, where we get, this is, uh, this is a Fourier, a Fourier at a spectrum, and uh, this uh, river passed, of course. They, and uh, this is top, or this is bottom, and uh, this is top sensor. And uh, uh, almost a half years, we uh, carry out the call, uh, monitoring. We find there's no any changes, no, no any change uh, for the uh, load change for the natural frequency. So we give the result. This written war, uh, retail, uh, retail uh, war is, is, is uh, uh, stable. There's no any problem. So it gives the advice to the government. It's very, very good result. The congregation, and uh, there is no change in natural frequency over time, or about the um, half half years, and there is no tendency for returning war to become unstable. It's the government will be reduced the uh, budget. Yeah, is fortunately after that a large earthquake happening here. This year, so if I, uh, this year the Toyama earthquake. Just our site in, in our, our monitoring site in here. Of course, we get the same. Uh, uh, we get uh, we we, we uh, monitor the earthquake on the cloud just like this, and this is a peak, and uh, this is a peak the the natural uh, frequency. The almost about uh, about the eighteen hertz. This is uh, ground on a, on, a, on a natural frequency, almost about eight hertz. And this is north south direction result and the east west result. Yeah, and you uh, and the down result. So the Finally, result will be used, uh, used uh, right in the congregation. The monitoring result of the Toyama earthquake, the natural frequency of the slope of ground or in C direction is 8 hertz, and the acceleration amplification of the uh, retaining wall and the biotransfer function is a uh, lost source and the under down is almost a uh, uh, four point nine and the two point three, and the actual frequency a range of the retained wars is from eight uh, eighteen to twenty two. This result is close agreement with the natural frequency results to, to uh, twelve to eighteen hertz for returning a war observed during the train pass. The earthquake and the train pass get the almost the same results, give the good advice to the governor and uh, <coughs> of course, and uh, re reduce the budget. Yeah, or from now on, we'll be uh, do the monitoring, uh, uh, never stop. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's all I finish. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. So we can have some uh, couple of questions uh, from the participants. So dear participants, if you have anything, uh, you can unmute and then you can start interacting with our speaker.
Uh, Mr. Lin, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm Dr. Pratik Negi from uh, uh, from Calicut, India. I'm also working on geotechnical monitoring. I just have a question: like, uh, did you uh, did it come across that you some of your sensors installed over there got malfunctioned? Ma malfunction? What's yeah. the meaning? No, 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 no. Malfunction. Ah, uh, yeah. Kosho, kosho. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, of course, the maintenance were very important. So we do the maintenance very well, or level, uh, level, uh, level, uh, level of, uh, uh, is, uh, keeps a uh, good condition. Uh, for example, our tier sensor was set up in the core bay CD. The over 10 years, but we do the uh, uh, maintenance never, uh, we can use continuous. I, I think the maintenance is very important. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi, this is Bali. I yeah. just have some query on here. Uh, it's uh, like uh, how it is feasible uh, for a general uh, purpose. I mean, uh, where you can use this is particular one site location, right? So how you can use so in general uh, application, you want to uh, use this one, how it is, uh, I mean, it, it, it will be applicable. Could you repeat the key issue? Yeah, actually, this system, uh, the uh, early warning system, is it depends upon the site location. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the slope gradient and the slope angle and the geological conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, now, people are using smart netting. Mm -hmm. uh, with sensors. So, what was the difference? Uh, this system under the, the smart netting system. Uh, if you have any idea, if you brief, it will be great. Okay, okay. okay let me answer you on behalf of Dr. Wang. Well, uh, uh, my name is Tohata. I'm, uh, I have been working with Dr. Wang for maybe 20 years uh, for okay. this uh, early, uh, early monitoring uh, project. Well, uh, actually, I'm not very sure about uh, smart. <laughs> sensor networks, but uh, uh, for practical early warning of rainfall induced landslides, uh, so number one, cost. Uh, there are many expensive ac but accurate sensing systems for important projects or for scientific program uh, project. We can use all those expensive sensors, but uh, our client, uh, local communities, they cannot afford high cost. So prices of sensors, networks have to be reasonably low. And this is called affordability. And number two, uh, 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 in particular in Japanese rainfall disasters, uh, the time between the beginning of rainfall until uh, the final landslide is only five, 10, not not as long as ten. Say, let's say eight hours only. So in the meantime, in this short time, we have to do monitoring, interpreting data, and we have to make decision. So system has to be simple. We cannot wait for say smart satellite image system come to the sky above the place. That's not good. That's not practical. And number three, uh, uh, we issue the uh, evacuation order when the rate of tilting is 0 0.1 degree per hour. This number is 100% empirical, empirical. So we have, we have measured uh, around 10 landslide events and always uh, the rate of tilting goes greater than 0 0.1 degree per hour before transride. So 0 0.1 degree per hour is empirical, but it's a lower bound and quite conservative. Probably geology is important, probably rainfall intensity is important, probably slope gradient is important, but uh, we have only 10, 20, or 15 cases only. That, that number is too small for any uh, statistic interpretations. So we take this lower bound 
as a conservative decision. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tawada. Actually, it is a uh, big challenge task uh, we are facing in India because to implement this early warning system, uh, as per government of India, uh, we are planning, uh, the government is planning to implement the early warning system in the uh, mainly Himalayan regions. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Bali, actually the system which we used is uh, Dr. Wang's system at Kalimpong. You read the literature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sensei, for uh, clearing this. And uh, actually, just want to add to what Professor uh, uh, Tawata uh, just mentioned. Uh, the system has been developed uh, at Tokyo University under the guidance of uh, Professor Tawata. And it has been like uh, validated in different parts of the world, including India. And uh, this is the most economical and reliable system which I have seen. So whatever the smart system you mentioned, I'm not aware of it because I'm actually involved in real-time monitoring of the landslides. Uh, so at different sites. So uh, the reliability is a very crucial aspect. And monitoring is not a kind of, it is a site specific. You have to design it. Where to monitor, how to monitor. And you know, there are many factors do come. So we cannot have a kind of prescription sort of thing this is the uh, you know sensors this is the unit and you just buy that and put it up it doesn't work okay so it has to go a lot of geological geohydrological geotechnical geophysical surveys has to be carried out and then only you have to put the instrumentation and then only we can start developing the warning system so uh, just to add to what uh, sensei said so, yeah, yeah, very yeah. extremely. Yeah, installation not so complicated as you say. <laughs> so, uh, as as you you mentioned, very complicated, uh, elaborate uh, uh, preliminary studies. But those studies can be very too expensive, and the local community cannot afford it. <laughs> so, so uh, we try to yes. make the system reasonably uh, inexpensive. Yes. Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, because nowadays the different com companies are, uh, I mean, uh, started this early warning system by using smart lighting system. Like Terra Army, there are some companies like uh, Macaferry and uh, Garware Technical Papers. So they are started uh, putting these sensors on the smart lighting system in slope and rockfall protection. I do agree, uh, Dr. Reddy, but uh, believe me, I have checked many of the systems, such systems from the companies as well. And they always say that what they are selling is like one of the best. But when it comes to installation, many of them have failed and the results is not at all like conclusive. So maybe before selecting some lit, uh, some system, we should always have a look at the literature and then only we can get a confidence on our system. By just keeping the name smart doesn't make it a smart actually. <laughs> yes, I agree with uh, Dr. Prateek. Well, excuse me, Dr. Wang's system eh, captured uh, uh, more than 10 landslides, and the total number of installations has been was 1,000. So only 10, 15 slope areas out of 1,000. That's a typical <laughs> number of landslide risk. And uh, there are two mistakes in monitoring. One mistake is called false positive. False positive mistake means the sensors say, it's dangerous, please escape, but nothing happens. This type of mistake is actually accepted by the community because nobody is killed. Yeah, but then another one is called false negative mistake. This is very bad because false negative means sensor does not say anything. Then suddenly landslide occurs and people are killed. And Dr. Wan system never made a false negative mistake. But maybe there are several false positive mistakes. Mistakes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sensei. Correct, correct. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. So, any more uh, questions from the participants? Yes. Dr. Wang, somebody wrote it about the cost of your system. Would you uh, like to? Yeah, I, I pay attention to the cost. I will difficult to tell you the uh, exact cost because in Japan and China and in India is different. So you can give some your 
uh, condition of, of, of the landslide, I will give some advice after that. Yes, okay. Uh, of course, you can email to me, um, uh, Professor Nima, uh, uh, maybe after that, what her tell me after that is okay. Yeah. Any problem. So I think the extensometer, good extensometer, is 10 to 20 times more expensive than Dr. Wan's instrument. This, this is the idea of cost. So any more technical questions from the participants? So the lectures are recording and it will be uploaded in the ISMG TC220 YouTube uh, link and also IGS YouTube link. It will be shared with all the registered participants and the details of uh, the speaker also, uh, I can share it with all the registered participants. Feel free to contact Dr. Wang, uh, who is very active in responding back. So if there are no questions, uh, so uh, I'll just proceed with it. Is that okay, Dr. George? Yes, it is. Okay. I thank you very much, everybody, for attending this uh, very interesting lecture. So I personally extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Wang for immediately accepting my request and also uh, my teacher, uh, my JSPS <laughs> guide at Professor Tawata to joining this lecture. Uh, also all our colleagues from uh, Indian Geotechnical Society and others from other nations for joining this uh, monthly lecture series. I suggest you to register it uh, in that uh, QR code given so that you keep getting the uh, uh, announcements of the next monthly lecture. So whoever are interested in field monitoring in geomechanics, please, uh, there is a LinkedIn page which Dr. George mentioned it in the starting that you can follow or you can also follow the YouTube thing uh, so that on register this so that you keep getting the reminders and uh, information about the every month lecture. So we'll be doing this monthly lecture series every uh, Friday, um, uh, preferably on, you know, Fridays on every month, third week. So uh, please keep your slots open and uh, join us and um, we'll interact to share our knowledge. With that, I just close this session. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Dr. Andrew, who is our chairman, TC220, for actively, you know, encouraging for this activity. And uh, thank you so much. Special thanks to Dr. Wang. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you, you ma'am, for conducting this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are closing.